Hello, this is Fred with another Font Forge tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, feature files. Feature files. A feature file is an Adobe format. It is a plain text description of open type tables. And we're going to be talking about this today as I've received a user question, again from Mr. Nirwandani. He asks, Hi Fred, does FontForge have a code editor for adding features? I want a code editor like the one in this program called Font Creator. If you don't mind, please make a video. I don't mind, so I'll make a video. FontForge, it has a code editor, but only for Python. However, FontForge does understand feature files, and you can edit them in any uh, uh, text editor and import them. So let me show a little bit about that. We've got two files open here, kjv1611.sfd and kjv1611.otf. We also have the feature file open so we can see how these files change, or how these fonts change. The sfd is the source file, and the otf is the output. The sfd is before this is merged, and the OTF is after it's merged and changes are made. Beyond feature files, another change that's made, you can see here in the SFD we have a bunch of different shapes, but in the OTF, those are all merged into one shape. Uh, that's done for Windows compatibility. Anyway, let's talk about the features. So if I open up the metrics view here, and we look at our features, we can see that we start off with the language system tags. These say just that this file applies to the following languages. So it applies to the Latin script, the Greek script, and the Cyrillic script. It also applies if no script is selected, so default. Now, the next thing I do is I define some classes. And there are many tutorials online about the feature file format. So if you don't understand it, you can uh, get lots of help online. It's fully compatible with the feature file format that's used in RoboFont or the Glyphs editor uh, like that. So you should have no problem understanding and finding help for this. So the first thing we define is a historical forms feature. And if we compare these two files here, these are the features over here on the left side. You see where it says current and mark? I'll pull up a magnifier to make that easier to see. Those are the features. So let's open a feature file for our OTF and get a comparison here. All right, so we can see that, yes, we have many more features here. And we can easily see, for example, in the word affiliate, right? If we write that in both of these, we can see that we receive an FF ligature here, but up here we don't receive a ligature because this does not yet have the LIGA feature, which is defined in this file, right here. So it would sub FF by the F underscore F. So yeah, we've got a few features here and I'll quickly go over them. The first one is historical forms. All this does is it just doesn't use letters that were not used at the time this font was made. This font is a recreation of a very old font. It is a recreation of a 17th century font from the year 1611. So things were different back then. The V and the U, they had the same glyph, as did the I and the J. Uh, they weren't yet separate. A long S was used instead of a so-called short S, and an R rotunda was in use. When you see a little apostrophe, that just says that this is the glyph that's affected. Now in these two cases, the apostrophe is not actually necessary, but it is down here because this is a contextual alternate. What it says is the two classes, lowercase and uppercase, so any of these letters in the lowercase and any in the uppercase that are followed by a V, the V should be substituted by a U. If there was no apostrophe here, the letter would disappear also, and both would become a U. And I can show quickly what this means in practice. 
for example, if we have the word, if we have the uh, word avian, right, in both of these, we'll see that they look the same. But when we enable the historical forms, you can see that that V becomes a U. And all I'm doing is holding down shift and pressing that historical forms button. Another thing is I and V will not appear in the historical forms version. See that? They become J and U. Uh, we also do some fixes for the long S. So let's say that we have here the word assistance. In the historical forms version, that would appear like this. And we can see that long S's are substituted, and they also become a ligature long S, long S, I, and the long S, T. We also have an R rotunda feature. So, similar to the lower upper, any B, D, P, D, H, O, P, W, or Y, followed by an R, and the R has the apostrophe, the R becomes the R rotunda by substitute. You might wonder why there are at signs before the P. Uh, that's because my font has a lot of different glyphs. It has a lot of different accented glyphs that the original book did not have. If we look down here, we can see all these accented glyphs. So, for example, the at W, that refers to the W, the W circumflex, and the W grave the W acute, and so on. So what that means in practice is if we have a word, like the word, uh, let's say wrong, like this, wrong. All right. In the historical forms version, that would become an R rotunda. See the difference? So yes, we can use feature files in FontForge, and this is built from a feature file. Mr. Nirwandani asked if it's uh, there's a code editor for feature files. No, and I don't really think it's necessary. And, and I'll show how quickly we can merge a feature file if that's what we want to do. We just go to File, Merge Feature Info. Our file here is called features.fea, and we just press all right. And now we have it merged. And now if I press space, uh, hold on. Yeah, it should be, it should all be there. If I press a space, I should get to see them. I might even have to reopen the window. Yeah, okay. Sometimes there's little bugs like that. You know how it goes. But now you can see in our SFD version, we've got all the features that I talked about, right? The assistance, the wrong. So, yeah, that's really about it for merging feature files. Now, Mr. Nirwandani brought up an interesting point about a code editor. FontForge actually does have a code editor. It was a little bit buggy a few releases ago, but we fixed a lot of the problems in it. If you go to File, Execute Script, you get this code editor. Now, a few releases ago, it would not warn you, or I'm sorry, sometimes it would crash if you clicked too much, like if you just meant too many clicks here, or if you just dragged wrong, there were, this dialogue was a little bit buggy, but uh, we, f we fixed all those. As far as I know, there's no more crashes in this. Another thing that will be in the next version is a commit that I made where if you have a code in here, like let's say we have import fontforge, and we use the post notice function, to uh, make a dialog box, hello, hi, right? So we have our script there. Now, by default, this is enabled in the preferences that it will warn you. It's called warn script unsaved. If you don't like the behavior, you can just disable it. But now if we try to quit our font, even if we, let's say, revert file, right? so that there's no more changes in it, uh, and we try to quit, 
it will say you have an unsaved script in the execute script dialog. Do you intend to discard it? And you can say either yes or no or don't remind me again. So if I hit no here and then I go to execute script, I can now save this as a Python script. So let's call this notice.py. And once I save it, I can now quit FontForge. So that's pretty much it as far as the scripting goes. You know, this is video is not going to be long enough for me to teach programming, but we have an excellent documentation here of the Python scripting. It's very involved, and um, a lot of my fonts actually are built with Python scripts. I use them to do all kinds of things, to remove overlaps, for example, to remove self-intersections, to automatically correct the direction of glyphs before export. So you can check out my fonts and the Python scripts with them. Sometimes in my um, latest font, Kaerite Regnum Dei, I actually have a uh, script that generates a feature file and then another script which imports that because the, um, the, uh, the feature file for Kaerite Regnum Dei would be so long to write by default, right? If we look at it here, uh, mirror you, no, it would just be, uh, yeah, if we look at our features here, we can see just how long this is. And of course, I didn't write this by hand. This was made by a script. So, yeah, using scripts and feature files, there's all kind of cool things you can do. But to succinctly answer your question, Mr. Nirwandani, yes. FontForge does absolutely support the Adobe feature file format, and we also support Python scripting. So anyway, happy font founding, everybody. God bless you. Hope you got something out of this video, and feel free to ask any more questions. All right. See you soon.